It's a man house! A man house! No, I'm not talking about our offices here at Sci-Fi Wire, but the big birthday celebration for one of Sci-Fi's most respected classics. This week marks the 50th anniversary of the first Planet of the Apes film, and to say we're going bananas over the occasion that would be correct. Sure, it's got one of the best twist endings ever filmed. I'm home. You maniac! You blew it up! God damn you all to hell! But for those unfamiliar with this hairy epic, we've got you covered with our salute to the movie that launched a jungle of sequels, prequels, TV shows, comics, games, lunchboxes, action figures, and an irrational fear of the Statue of Liberty. It all started the 1963 novel La Planète des... It's French for Planet of the Apes. It's by French sci-fi master Pierre Boulle. The book was known as Monkey Planet in the UK and Planet of the Apes here stateside. But whatever the title, it instantly leaped into the bestseller charts. Boulle was a former World War II spy and had also written the famous novel The Bridge on the River Kwai. He whipped out Planet of the Apes in less than six months after a trip to the zoo got him thinking about the close relationship between apes and humans. The savage commentary on man's path to self-destruction centers around a pair of vacationing interstellar honeymooners who discover a bottle containing a strange journal floating in space. It's written by a French astronaut from the year 2500 who recounts his bizarre mission to a distant planet orbiting Beetlejuice. No, not this Beetlejuice. This one. This bizarro world is run by smart monkeys and mankind are enslaved animals. The intrepid astronauts arrive back at Orly Airport in Paris 700 years later where they find civilization filled with talking apes. The twisty ending arrives when we learn the two starbound honeymooners are actually chimpanzees too. Producer Arthur Jacobs optioned the best-selling book and spent three years trying to convince Hollywood executives to make his odd monkey movie. Studios were nervous that audiences would ridicule and laugh at the makeup effects, so it wasn't until he shot a $5,000 makeup test in 1966 with Charlton Heston as Taylor and Edward G. Robinson as Dr. Zayas in full ape regalia that convinced 20th Century Fox's Daryl Zanuck to peel off five million to make the movie happen. Apes was filmed in the arid expanses of Northern Arizona near the Grand Canyon, along the Colorado River, Lake Powell, and locations near Page, Arizona. Ape City interiors and exteriors were all shot on the Fox Ranch in Malibu Creek State Park. Those climactic beach scenes were filmed on a stretch of California sand between Malibu and Oxnard. Due to 130 foot high cliffs. The production's cast, crew, food, camera equipment, wardrobe, and even horses had to be carefully lowered in by helicopter. The remains of the Statue of Liberty were shot in a secluded cove on the far eastern end of Westward Beach between Zuma Beach and Point Doom in Malibu. Macho Hollywood hunk Charlton Heston was attached to play the lead astronaut George Taylor. Take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape! With co-stars Maurice Evans as Dr. Zayas, Kev Hunter as Zira, and Ronnie McDowell as Cornelius, rounding out the Simeon cast. Directed by industry veteran Franklin Schaffner and released on March 27, 1968, Planet of the Apes was a smash and collected a ripe box office take of over $32 million. Its sharp screenplay by The Twilight Zone's Rod Serling and Michael Wilson kept the spirit of the novel, but ventured into a more rooted reality better suited for a screen adaptation. Besides the switch to American astronauts crash landing on a mystery planet after a spaceship malfunction, the novel doesn't contain the jaw-dropping finale where Taylor and Nova stare up the half-buried Statue of Liberty, proving they're actually standing on the beach of a far future Earth. The cautionary tale depicting the nightmarish world where apes are the dominant species was revolutionary for its time and allowed science fiction cinema to come of age as a compelling, 
provocative vehicle for fantastic ideas. It also demonstrated that the stepchild genre could convey intelligent themes and commentary on race, government, and technology. Discover Planet of the Apes, a civilization where humans run wild in the jungles. And the superior beings are apes. Produced during a turbulent era in American history, with civil unrest and the Vietnam War raging on, Planet of the Apes was a groundbreaking cinematic experience screened when most science fiction films were deemed trivial. Along with another revolutionary movie of the year, Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, which arrived one week later on April 3rd, Planet of the Apes proved that speculative fiction could be a provocative, intelligent genre suitable for the silver screen that could also rake in the cash. Apes Academy Award-winning prosthetic makeup was delivered by the legendary John Chambers, who was played to perfection by John Goodman in Ben Affleck's Argo. Chambers had an excellent reputation as the go-to guy for creature effects in Hollywood, having worked on The Outer Limits, Lost in Space, and The Monsters. He also was the man responsible for Spock's pointy Vulcan ears on the original Star Trek. When the production started, it took Chambers' army of makeup artists up to six hours a day to transform actors into full ape getup, including the hair, brows, feet, ears, mouth, and hands. Chambers received an honorary Oscar at the 41st Academy Awards in 1969 for his pioneering makeup effects. At the time, there was no award for best makeup, making this the first honor ever given to a makeup artist. His gold statue was delivered on stage by a tuxedoed chimpanzee as presenter Walter Matthau looked on in amusement. The movie was also nominated for Jerry Goldsmith's pounding, primitive score and Morgan Hack's minimalist costume design. During meal breaks on set, the cast naturally fell with their own species when selecting tables. Human actors, chimps, orangutans, and gorillas all separated into their own appropriate groups when eating together. For the film's eerie final twist, creating a full-scale model of Lady Liberty was impossible. Schaffner used a special matte painting by Emil Cosa Jr. paired with a half-scale recreation of the famous statue's head and torch shot from an erected scaffold. Cosa was the artist behind the original 20th Century Fox logo and the resulting visual trick is probably the most shocking ending of film in cinema history. Planet of the Apes remains a pivotal piece of art that spawned a succession of four sequels, a short-lived TV series, an animated Saturday morning cartoon, a Tim Burton remake in 2001, and a rebooted trilogy from directors Rupert Wyatt and Matt Reeves. And let's not forget the goofy pop culture parodies poking fun at the apes phenomenon. Oh my God, you finally did it. You mixed Buzz Cola with the smooth, rich taste of lemon. Take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty dog. So raise a banana daiquiri for apes golden jubilee and salute its daring quest to push science fiction into more respectable climes. Where do you place Planet of the Apes in the Sci-Fi Hall of Fame and what is your most memorable moment or line from this perception-altering masterpiece. Sound off in the comments and follow Sci-Fi Wire for more electrifying news from all corners of the geek galaxy.